Now, just ignore the elevator music playing across the entire space. Hey guys, Jonathan again with the founder sessions here, Nomad Financial. Uh, normally we've been fighting with fire alarms, but today they're, they're trying to put us to sleep with some <laughs> really terrible elevator music in the background. I don't know if you hear it, but uh, we definitely do. It's a little bit of the slow jam, isn't it? It's a slow jam, Ooh. exactly. Uh, so I have Levi here with me. Levi, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Well, to give a uh, hi, I'm Levi. To give everyone a little bit of background, I've been with Nomad uh, oh, since the beginning of the year and been having a really good time working on some very exciting clients. Uh, I think today we're here to talk about the uh, blockchain and some of the exciting stuff that we've done with a few of our clients, as well as some of the, the different challenges that are going to come up um, and that we can certainly help with and some of the exciting things that the future holds for these businesses. Yeah, I, I think with blockchain, it's, it's really interesting how much is going on in that space. It's such an interesting topic to cover. It feels like it's constantly changing. There's a lot of excitement around it given, I think, where the valuation of different currencies has gone over the last year, over the last month, over the last 15 days. And uh, what's happened with ICOs, right? There are examples of companies who've ICOed you know, with $5.8 million, $5.8 million of value mm -hmm. in the currency at 10x, so something went from raising roughly $6 million to 60, and the difference that can happen on business. Uh, super compelling stuff, but at the same time, it raises the question of how do you manage a company that's touching the space, playing the space, collecting that currency? And I think ideally for our audience, you could kind of share and give some guidance for people who either are in the space, just curious about the space, or, you know, are actually gonna build a business here. Mm -hmm. So the big thing about Bitcoin and the blockchain at the moment is that it's in the news because of the high valuations you're seeing and the very volatility, uh, the very volatile nature of the currency itself. Bitcoin is the big one and it's certainly what a lot of people have been talking about because it was the first one. So it very much opened up the market and has been the pioneer in the space and it is at the moment probably the most stable because it is so readily traded. The valuations we're seeing on new ICOs with uh, new technologies, for, for those that don't know, an ICO being an initial coin offering. So these are new currencies themselves. Um, with the different currencies, they tend to trade um, on a different base, which is different from Bitcoin. Bitcoin itself is trading off the individual tokens um, and then using that as a system of exchange because it's sort of agreed what those are worth and the value it takes to mine those. Uh, systems like Ethereum are trying to create like distributed networks and then you can use those as um, access to the networks and this is what some of the ICOs are built off. They're essentially offering a new sort of technology that then you can purchase into and then the back end of the system sort of provides the backup for it. Where these systems this being as complicated it is, the problem that people see with these cryptocurrency businesses is that they might not necessarily understand the technology sitting at the top of it. So this is, in a sense, and it's why you're seeing these massive valuations, this is the new Facebook. It's the new technology boom that we saw in the early 2000s and then come through again in 2006, 2008. Uh, because the traditional market didn't necessarily understand the basis of the technology, people would get on board and then there'd be wide scale adoption of course, you'd see these values go from nothing up to massive. So you're skipping that middle stage of a business where that value is getting wider and wider acceptance of the market. It suddenly sort of shoots through the roof. And then in a sense, a lot of businesses um, are struggling because they're not getting past that first step and that's where we can sort of help as an accounting firm. So what, what are a lot of the misconceptions about blockchain tech companies when you think about the kind of the back end and financial operations? So the, the biggest problem with um, that people have as a concept of these companies is that they're trading in these currencies that aren't necessarily real in a sense. Everyone understands what a US dollar is worth. Everyone understands what the yen is worth. But with the valuation of these currencies fluctuating so wildly, how can I understand the value of what is standing on my balance sheet. So someone's going to come toward, I'm, say I'm a, a, a new stage bit, Bitcoin uh, blockchain company, and I go, okay, I've got this great new technology, I deal mostly with vendors that work in the same space, so we're all working off essentially a currency that doesn't have a set value. How do I transfer that back into US dollars that investors speak in? So what we do, um, and would you, should I speak towards the just the, the how, that sort of translate to a, a transactional basis? 
Yeah, I think so. I think that's helpful. So as a very basic example, say um, you go out and you buy a MacBook. You understand that it costs 2,000 US dollars. How do you, tr but say you paid for it with a Bitcoin. How do you translate what that Bitcoin was worth onto your financial statements? Because you may have essentially paid $1,000 for that Bitcoin traditionally, but the value that it is now created, so you're paying half of that Bitcoin for that $2,000 in the future. How do you get that onto your balance sheet? Uh, and how do you get that onto your income statement? So we're recording at an expense level what that is in the US dollars. You're then breaking it back into what is the gain I got on that coin? So it's almost like a foreign currency exchange. And then that drops into a, a gain or loss at the bottom. That then loops back into how your balance sheet and um, the assets you're holding. So ideally you're keeping a store of these coins in a wallet somewhere. Um, one of the more readily available ones uh, that a lot of people would, would have heard of in the news is Coinbase. Um, so say you've got your Coinbase wallet and it's got a coin in it that you paid thousand dollars for it. At each month you need to demonstrate the number of assets you hold and because these, uh, these coins are so volatile, how am I showing month on month how much my company is worth? This is the overnight millionaire problem with these coins. So I'm, so, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kind of try to plain language that a little bit, yeah. right? Which it sounds to me like typically using the example if you buy a MacBook, it's a credit card, the reconciliation on your accounting is pretty simple. Yeah. Right. It literally is making sure that the that the the money out matches the entry of the, ex, the expense entry. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, where when you're dealing with Bitcoin, you know, it, it, you mentioned it, it being like using a it's a foreign currency expense. Yeah. So if suddenly, your your it's multiple entries for what could have been a a more simple transaction. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And so I think that's a big thing for for people in the space is understanding that using these currencies as a layer of complexity that otherwise wouldn't exist um, and work that otherwise wouldn't exist. Exactly. Okay, got it. And um, beyond stuff like that, is the typical blockchain company relatively similar to other tech companies? Uh, certainly in a sense because the product they're providing uh, or they can be similar to many sort of startup companies because the product they're providing isn't necessarily tested and you won't necessarily have those revenue streams. You just have an additional layer of complexity in potentially how your purchasing is occurring on the back end. For companies dealing outside the traditional um, cryptocurrencies, it can get even more complex because then you start dealing with things that there isn't necessarily an open market for. Got it. Okay. And. Um you know, I, you know, there's this idea of, you know, you're starting out a business in this space. You plan on going to institutional investors at some point. Maybe not, actually. Maybe you don't have to. But, um, you know, are there certain rec recommendations for founders who are planning this space as they think about building this business that they should be really keenly aware of, where they may, you know, they may have uh, otherwise risk that they, they could be ignoring or, or, you know, worth worth considering. So, in a sense. To, to ignore, the, the biggest risk with those currencies is of course the volatility. From a business sense, it's the yeah. same as any small startup business. The best thing you can be doing to avoid risks in your business is to correctly set up the systems on the back end. So you want to have uh, an effective accounting system. You want to be recording the transactions that you're performing on a day-to-day -day business like any other normal startup. The more you can have your business appear to be operating normally, the more readily it is to accept as someone from outside the sphere of understanding the, the, the blockchain. You also want to have uh, a solid accounts payable tracking system. You want to be understanding the invoices where this money is flowing in and out of your business. You also want to keep pretty solid records as well as of um, not just your traditional bank accounts, but also the transactions going in and out of your Coinbase account. So if you're collecting a lot of different types of payments, it really just adds more work, more layers of complexity to manage. Exactly. For, okay. for, for every step that these um, system, the, these, the, the currencies make our lives easier for giving us access or potentially um, more secure transactions, there is another layer of complexity somewhere else in your business. So it's, it sounds like if you're a, a, an entrepreneur or a business owner or an executive at a company where you're considering leveraging blockchain currencies as a method of payment, call it Bitcoin, yep. that 
that opening up of the market is only one consideration of whether you should do it or not. Exactly. So you always need to consider the a good way to consider the um, the holding cryptocurrencies or accepting them as payments is to consider them potentially as a, a very risky foreign foreign currency that you're holding. At one moment, it could certainly balloon and be more valuable than the service you're providing for it. It could fall over the next day. Got it. And so, you know, as someone who works with blockchain companies, you know, what do you do to help them better navigate the space, particularly from a financial reporting perspective? So. In a financial reporting perspective, the best thing that we can do for these companies is provide regular financial accounts. So again, we want to be uh, reconciling the statements, reconciling all the transactions coming through the business so we have a full understanding of the expenses flowing in and out. We also want to, on the sort of, again, looping back to how we're understanding the, the, uh, the currency held in Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, we want to be doing a monthly reconciliation on that and balancing it back to the current market value because we want to understand what is the asset you're holding at the moment. So before we go deeper on blockchain and we let everybody's brain stop exploding for a second, I'm going to give a shout out to City Row. <laughs> Levi's wearing here. It's the best workout in New York City. They are not a sponsor. We just love Helene Knapp, their founder, and the team there. Uh, it's pretty epic. It's uh, it's like Soul Cycle. I mean, they hate they hate me for giving this comparison, but. But instead, it's rowing, which is a better impact on your body. And yeah. you know, at least one of the two of us looks like a really healthy person up here. <laughs> Maybe two, one and a half. I'll take a half. Also, I want to give a quick, a quick shout out to Nam Lee, who's behind the camera as always. Nam, you're amazing. You bring the heat. Uh, we love having your support doing this. Um, at some point, we may drag him to the front of the camera as well. Uh, so with that, let's go back to blockchain. Uh, how do you feel about the future of the technology? What are the, some of the things, that, you know, and I, and I think the audience could tell blockchain for you isn't just work. There's clearly a deeper line interest for you. You know, so I, I'm, I'm super curious about where this question could go. So I, at, on a personal level, and of course everyone has different opinions on what's happening with the technology because there is a lot of debate in the market about it at the moment. I think the underlying technology that has been created from this system is where the most value lies. So I certainly think that this information is around, or this technology is around to stay. We're going to see larger players in the market take up um, the technology and potentially roll it into their systems. There's certainly a lot of value in the um, big banks and some very transactional heavy um, industries where security of transactions is paramount. Uh, the biggest things in the news at the moment is certainly data breaches, so personal information and security is going to jump on the ability to lock down information securely and almost anonymously within a regulated sort of system. So I certainly believe that while cryptocurrencies themselves are going to go through spikes and dips, the underlying technology we're going to see more and more sort of rolling out as bigger businesses and especially some startups come up with new and novel ways to use this and it's going to make um, our lives easier just because once we've ironed out the back end of these systems as far as the complexity of recording the currencies and sort of the tax implications there, the, the new technology is just going to be that much better for us. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most interesting things about the blockchain space is their ability to self-fundraise. Right, I, I believe year to date you've less than a billion dollars has gone into blockchain startups from traditional investors, venture mm. capitalists, where they've ICO for like a billion and a half dollars, right? So, you know, one and a half X uh, of self-determined financing is, kind of, is pretty amazing. Yeah, and, and again, this speaks back to that new technology period, sort of when um, computer and information technology first started out, it was nothing and nothing and nothing until it exploded. So I think we'll see a relatively same thing here where you're going to get a lot of people that truly believe in the space and certainly believe that they can do something with the technology, taking those first steps and certainly risking everything they have themselves, and they're going to be the, the leaders in the market. Some people will find success. A lot of people are going to burn out. Oh, of course. Um, but it's that idea of building the core infrastructure, like the, if you think about the internet, mm -hmm. and then later came all the apps, later came Facebook, later became the platforms that sat on top of it. And now the internet's ubiquitous. Yeah. Um, the investment cycles aren't quite the same. You know, businesses being built on aren't, aren't quite the same. 
Uh, you think about you know, Amazon is, is everywhere, right? But that, you know, that literally is being built on top of what had existed before in a lot of the different types of risk takers. So it's, it's interesting to see how fast the blockchain technology is building that, that mm -hmm. core structure. Like, I'm, you know, I'm curious to see if they, can, if they can beat those cycles and even cheat some of them along the way, which people are hopeful they could do. Um, I'm always skeptical of cheating cycles, right? I mean, uh, business building and you know, and infrastructure building are all the same, right? This yeah. requires certain steps before the others. Any last thoughts on Bitcoin, things we haven't had a chance to touch on, or blockchain that you know, would be, I think, good for our audience? Uh, I certainly think there's a lot of information out there that you can read on. Certainly, um, if, you, if you read Crunchbase or io9 or any of those technology-based forums, they certainly make it a lot more accessible for people that are interested in understanding the space and understanding what's happening with the technology beyond some of the hype information that's around massive valuations and coins. It's, it's certainly one of those spaces where if you're interested in getting the technology, it's a space where people have, who have the skills, or certainly at least the base interest to get involved in these business, are slowly becoming more and more in demand. So if it's something you're interested in, there's a wealth of information out there. And then one last topic I'd love to cover, we only have a few minutes left. You know, as somebody who works with entrepreneurs all the time, founding companies, what advice would you provide them for someone who's always kind of working on the engine of the, of the business, you might say? So on the back end of the businesses, the, the, the biggest thing I can say, because a lot, of the, uh, a lot of businesses in the industry start out with people that aren't necessarily the most orderly. What you want to do to, to definitely put your business in the best space is certainly having a good idea and a good basis of the technology, but certainly putting in the effort to build out the back end or certainly engage people that can help you building out the back end are one of the most vital things you can do because you do tend to find out that a lot of these businesses get to a crunch period without fully realizing it in advance. And saving yourself in that last minute is a lot harder without any assistance. And, and a lot more expensive because everything is an emergency, yeah. right? And there's, you don't have much negotiating room when you're, you know, when you're a few weeks out from a fundraise and, and you know, I don't know if I could say this out loud, but shit's a mess, right? Like, <laughs> I guess cursing's a lot on Facebook. We'll find out soon enough. Benji did. Oh, Benji did. Otherwise, Nam's gonna like, beat me out. Like, everyone's just gonna see, you know, my like the blurry mouth, right? Um, it'll like be lots of eyes everywhere. It'll be watching like like 1980s comedies, like uh, Trading Places, but on TBS. You know, they play all the time, and then you see the you actually see the original version on Netflix, and you're shocked by the jokes because you haven't heard them in so long. <laughs> You know, like, I can't believe somebody just said that on television. So, uh, yeah, not this moment now. I don't think anybody's going to get offended by, by my choice of language. So, I mean, I think with that, we're, you know, we've had a pretty good session here. Levi, thanks a lot for coming on, sharing with our audience about the, the blockchain space. I know ideally in the future we'll chat some more about the tax implications of blockchain. So I think that's another whole area where mm -hmm. how you treat this entire asset base is going to be different than, uh, than just currencies in general. Along with the fact the IRS hasn't really made a lot of rulings on this. There's a lot of fuzzy areas. It's a, the development is so fast that there's going to be some catch up. And if you're in this space and with lots of money in the blockchain, you know, you'll want to definitely make sure you, uh, you're staying up to date on these things. Because the tax man always coming, right? No one escapes the tax man. No one escapes the tax man. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, again. And look forward to seeing everybody next week.